Hey there everyone and welcome back to the layout. Uh, it's been a while since my last update but the reason for that is because I've done a massive clean on the layout. It took me a good couple of days in the evenings to clear it out. I started Sunday and today is Thursday now so it's taken me quite a while to clear everything out. As you can see it's looking nice and clean at the moment. All that's down is basically some track, which is some loose track that I've got, which um, I need to replace. But so basically the reason why there's some, some loose track I'll get to that in a second, but other than rolling stock and any cars or vehicles, there is nothing else on the layout, or, and of course buildings of course, besides the, the actual stuff. Uh, basically I had a whole section here, I don't know if some of you guys remember my earlier videos, I had a whole section here full of tools and little bits and pieces, I got a tripod there. That's gonna stay there because if I put it somewhere else, I'm gonna I'm gonna lose that little guy. So that's the only thing that's on the layout which doesn't need to be there. Other than that, the layout's been cleared out. Um, all the wrong stuff put away into boxes, which have been stacked nicely. Um, so all my uh, not used boxes are basically sitting over here. Got a nice shelf and a bit of boxes. And all in there is my American rolling stock. And I got some accessories for the. The station basically now you probably can't see them but there's a whole box full there just collecting them up and some of my um, logos there there's no light there so it's a bit pretty bad but as you can see i'll just show you some of the logos that you guys have seen who wants to focus here we are class 20 class 20 37 and my um my american roundhouse logo and my sd 70 m in the csx Plus 59, which is out on the layout, as well as my 47, which is out on the layout. So at the moment, coming around the corner is a 416. Yep, and around this corner is a 47 coming across, and the big BR blue stripe with the intercity coaches and the brake coach at the back. And I've got my MPV running on its new Dakota. Um, so it's now running on its Sparkling Dakota. Before I was using a uh, class 20 Dakota. They were both 21 pins, but um, now it's, it's, it's been assigned to its own Dakota and it's running nice and smooth. The only problem I had was with the weight. One of the units has got weight on it, the other one doesn't. So that means on the incline it, it tends to be a bit stubborn. But I resolved that issue by putting um, my track rubber inside one of the components, which just seemed to weigh it down enough so it can go around. Other than that, it's a beautiful, beautiful look. I really like the lights. They're nice and crystal clear. And for a two-car set, it, it runs beautifully on my my curves, they haven't had a problem with it, so that's good. Now for the changes in the layout. Oh, I've got my 70s there as well. The reason why the 70s there in this line is all cleared out is because I've moved a lot of stuff in the layout. So, I was, oh, trees that have been falling down. I keep moving the tables so the trees, they just, they just stay on the floor now for the time being. Oh, I've got some track buffers I've installed. But if I span across slowly, you can see that the other side of the layout haven't taken a lot of shots, but if I keep spanning across, I've got, oh, what's this, a wagon tower. Yeah, I finally got my wagon tower, it's finally come in. That's the only reason why these BNSF cars are out here. It was just to show you exactly how my layout, um, my scene's going to fit. Originally, I was planning on having it on this corner, but there wasn't enough room. And I've noticed that it fits pretty much smack on perfectly for exactly how I'm going to use it. So basically, if I just move some stuff, move the track buffers out of the way, you can kind of see over there, actual shoot off the coal machines towards the end so if I drag this BNSF car all the way to the tip um, it clearly goes into to the last car so basically this this section of the layout I actually changed to fit the container yard but it actually worked out perfectly that I've changed it nicely and actually fits a wagon tail so basically what I've done is I've ripped out all the track the track used to basically come off where this EWS 66 is and used to dart across basically in the same direction as you can see the wires are here so it used to come up to about here and it only used to shoot out um, one, uh, one siding basically there and there used to be a siding back here somewhere here there used to be a siding so I've changed that now and uh, basically what I've done is I've bought a, another curve point so curve point after curve point and then just here where this EWS is on the other side you can see the right handed point coming out and that leads out onto the two lines which can easily fit a six car train broken up into basically one side is empties and the other side is full when the full is when basically when one side gets full they just switch around which is not a problem for the switcher because he's got a, a whole line here to, to fill up so basically the switcher will come out um, take take the cars out 
onto the main and back and back and back up. Basically onto this onto this the passing siding where the 66 is currently sitting. And he, he's got the whole length here which can easily fit a six car train. As I as have demonstrated with my 66. So that's not a problem. So you can back up and, and dump the first three cars and then go back around and move the cars around. A lot of shuffling, a lot of switching which seems to be a lot of fun. So obviously the, the BNSFs are the bigger cars so I wanted to see if they fit first. And of course these um these EWS wagons which I was gonna use for the the wagon concrete tower can also fit, but I'm thinking of changing it now. I didn't realise I'd be able to fit the, the three cars like that, so I'm thinking of changing my concrete cars into the newer ones that Barkman introduced. They're about fifty odd dollars each. I'll get I'll get into it, I'll have a quick look. So basically I was just wanting to show you the diff the two different prototypes, how how well they, they basically worked. So that was the main change. It took me uh, surprisingly it took me quite a while to rip this all up. I was having a bit of fun and then you and I didn't have a chisel. So basically what, what was there before was a it was a plastic sheet covering the whole thing. And all where that where the where the coal hoppers are. It was a plastic sheet and that was a pain to rip up. But as you can tell no no damage done. All I've done is I filed it basically down. I filed them all down. Um, there's a little patches here and there, but as soon as I get the ballasting done, you won't be able to notice it because the, the ballast will just seep into the patches and it'll just basically make it more even more realistic. So I wouldn't have a problem there. Um, now for the, 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 the change resulting from this, I had to move my container yard on this side and what do you know, it fits exactly. Um, at the moment, um, I still got a, space, a bit of space at the back to push these cars back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the, the container yard. I'm um, going to replace these two tracks. I get them both replaced. I want them one piece, not three or four different pieces. I want a nice consistent piece. So what I'll do is I'll replace the pieces. I'll have them go all the way up to the end. And basically I'll be e easily able to fit these two, two lots of containers. And the same process I'm using them here. One side empties, one side falls. So of course the containers that are getting switched over will be on where these um, SAM skip containers are and the empties will be where the DHL is basically. And this also results into them having plenty of run, run around space as well back here. So I, I, as you can see, the class semi was here just to, just to show you the purpose of how much space is really back here. So basically the shunt will pick them up and back them. Oh, I'm on the wrong side, give me a second. I'm just hitting against the window, that's that noise, that's all. So basically the shunter can basically push them back and basically start uh, and create a train basically in these two sidings. I'm going to try and dedicate one of these sidings or even both of these sidings just for container runarounds but where the class 70 is it's just going to be dedicated hopefully for a few passenger cars to be stored and this line here should be plenty of space to basically for the train to be linked up for the, the containers so what I need to purchase well what I need to purchase first of all uh, engine wise is a is a basically a, sh a shunter for the American stock I got I got a I got an old well not old I got a, pr a prototypical one for the older generation but not 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 one for the newer and American line and I had I've had my eye out on one of the Aston ones so I might be thinking of getting that and I really like the class 60 from um, Hornby surprisingly I'm into Hornby now but the class 60 steel Titans Express or steel Titans uh, if I can't remember I'll put a link in the description but um, it's it's it looks pretty good and then my hobby still has it in stock so but other than that, those are the things I want. But of course, um, I'm not, not going to get them so soon. I really want to try and finish this this track work. It, it's coming. It's pretty pretty much coming coming up to it. I was really waiting for this wagon tower, and I'm I'm not I'm not disappointed at all. Bachman made this one pretty pretty damn good. Um, it seems to be the detail on it, even though it looks pretty plain. The detail on it is a, is pretty well. They've, they've they've made it durable as well. Unlike some of the structures I get, if I just come up to the structure, it's um, basically nice and solid. So there's no, there's no basically bending the plastic or anything like that. They made it nice and firm. It's got some details along the side there for the chutes, and basically, if I come down here. There's there's a there's a little lighted section. You probably won't be able to pick it up on the camera, but um, just there in the middle of the camera there, if I can focus. It's green and basically the the two the two green ones are green light, ones are red light basically. And I want, I'm, I'm most likely if I can, I'll try and get some lighting installed into that part. But, alright, focus back out. There we are. And as you can see, got plenty of plenty of lighting up. So the lighting in the in the actual room is pretty pretty decent. That the down lights really support the layout well, and it's really picking up that area, of my container yard and my facility well, as well as my station area will come up nice and bright. 
Um, now, to, now to this end of the layout, um, this is the, probably the reason why the tracks. This is the reason why the tracks are here. I'm still going to install this switcher, uh, this switch tray. But the reason why the switch hasn't been installed is because unfortunately, the engine shed that I pre-ordered uh, it was out of stock, so I didn't end up getting it. We're pretty disappointed. It was a really nice Barkman one. Um, they had pretty much dead on detail which I was after. It was a nice modern shed which could be used pretty much cheated to be used on both areas. It was perfect for the layout. Um, well I can't do anything at this stage so I have to I have to go looking for another entrance shed. And the reason why this point is here is because I'm gonna replace this Hornby point. Um, I've I managed to get a quite a few of these spares um, the spare Pico points so I what I'll do is I'll replace that point there. Get rid of that Hornby point so that way my whole the whole layout, basically all the point work is all Pico. There's only one, well, there's just two circles of track which are Hornby, which is just the outer loop. And there's only a certain sections that are Hornby, um, only because Pico, Pico don't make um, the wider radius, any, um, they only make it in the standards and the money wise it wasn't adding up. But, the, but I, don't, I don't mind, Horn, Hornby track aren't too bad, the points are just terrible. So all your curve tracks are, um, are perfectly happy to use. But just the points, uh, don't agree with that's all. So basically, my my, my track my track on the layouts um, Hornby on the on most of the curves, if not all of the curves. So there's some Pico um, flexi track on the curves as well to even it out. Um, on the straights, I got Atlas and Pico. Atlas was what I was recommended firstly, but I found Pico very easy to use. And all my point work now, as soon as I change that last point, is all Pico. Uh, I've, got, I've got some streamlined points, basically. Streamline points are mainly places coming off the main. So any junctions that I've, I've tried my best to use Pico. Yeah, streamline, and then I've also you have to use the, the set track from straight, uh, Pico, which is a lot better than the Hornby. They, they do, they do, they do their their research a lot more better. It seems like the quality is a lot more better, and I don't have any problems with the trains running through these crossovers. The only bit of crossover junction that uh, Hornby that I have on my layout is these diamond crossings. Which I can't change, so that's that. I can't do that. Uh, Pico don't make it on the same size. They make it only in streamline, so no point. I'll have to put bits of tracks basically here and here, here and here, just to fill up the point. And it'll look all messy and it'll have problems. So I went with Hornby with this one, and it seems to be running not too bad. I'm just happy that um, happy that the whole layout's working. I got a lot of wiring to do now. Now with this new section coming up, as well as this section, I have to tear up and replace. Um, I've got quite a bit of wiring to get my head stuck into. Um, I basically got to start drilling holes just before that point where that, uh, what's that? looks like a bit of um, foam. So when I was opening that box, I ended up opening right on the table. So that's all the foam. But but I got heaps of heaps and heaps of wiring to put in on this side. This side's got to be working spot on, especially if I got switches working on the layout. They need to be having constant power. The switch pickups are very small, unlike these EWS 66 and the 47. They got Multiple pickups. The switches only have maybe one or two pickups on each, on each uh, set, and the the sets aren't that on that far apart. So if, if one of the sets dead, basically you're bound to be the whole power, whole unit's going to be dead. And then obviously the big hand comes across and tries to slide it across. It doesn't look nice. So I need to get that wiring done. For cleaning wise, it, um, I did manage to get uh, the train going around with a track rubber on it. So I did the train was cleaning while I was cleaning around it basically. So that was a bit of fun what I was doing, but other than that, the layout seems to be in good. It's it's heading there. It's heading the right direction. And before I go, I want to thank you guys for all your your support. I just hit 100 subscribers not too long ago. I was meant to mention that at the beginning, but it just crossed my mind. And hopefully, I can post something up for you guys in in the future. I'm just busy at the moment during the week. So during the week, like at the moment, it's well nearly six o'clock in the evening, and I've just come home from work. So I'm very busy during the week. I come home, by the time I sit down and relax, it's always, by the time I look at the time, it's already 8 o'clock and then people want to sleep in my house and then it does make a bit of noise indoors because I'm, I'm, I am indoors, I have the privilege of being indoors, but I am looking to move outside, I want to expand this layout, but I'm still still deciding, the, this layout basically started off as, as nothing, as, as basically was downstairs in the garage and it started off really small and I've worked on it really hard and I basically made it what it is today. But I want to I want to keep expanding. Um, I've actually mastered quite a few few new skills with trial and error, which is good. I'm now pretty decent at soldering, and I can make it even better. So 
it's, it's getting there. Um, other than that, I'm not too sure what I'm going to put here yet in the middle. Now with this calling tower here, it's, it's actually more convenient for prototypical running only because I can have some cold cars, basically um, I can have some facility cars there and basically there's a nice run around at the top to come around. Um, I've got some lorries just sitting here just showing basically what the run around would do. Um, I'm, I'm thinking I might have in like a car park during the, in the middle with a, with a couple of office buildings for the, for the concrete facility and having this get this gated off here with like restricted access basically so that way it, it actually looks pretty much prototypical I want to have this area secluded basically and um, I'll see how I go I will still want to have a bit of access to the uh, facility at the back there I'm, I'm having a repair facility where the 59 is so I'll get into that um, trains are running well haven't had any problems the tracks pretty clean contacts on the mains are spot on just the sidings I need to work on, which is the easy part. As long as the mains are running, it's kind of like motivation to basically keep going on with the wiring. Uh, with the wiring, I recommend basically when you when you do wiring to do all of it at once. So I did all my main lines at once, and I did most of my sidings. And then as I've changed most of my track work now, I need to go back and do the wiring. But doing it all at once means you know everything's working. So I know everything on my main line is working perfectly fine. I don't have any dead spots. I don't have any anything like that. I only had a few troubles with elevation, which I've mastered already. I've got these basically some rubbers to basically ease up the elevation, just as prototypical. Um, the trains don't have any problems getting up or over it, so that's good. My 47 is running running well, as well as the MPV is running perfect. Um, tip of tip of advice uh, when basically installing points is to try and get the holes down before you put the points in. Um, the main reason is it's a lot easier to install the point motors. So all the new points that I put in I already have pre pre drilled holes for the point motors, which is nice and easy to, to resolve. Um, I might have to go around doing some more holes, but it's it's a nice step to go through. Um, I'm looking at getting another two cars of these. Um, they, they look they look really nice. The red on the layout it, it stands out so really catch, catches your attention I should be able to fit give me a second I should be able to fit a whole four car rake in um, in this side here so let me just check yeah I should just fit exactly a four car rake basically into the siding and that will look really good um, still deciding if I should go ahead with the station on both sides on one side station at the moment's on hold that's the last part to do I want to finalize all the track work station. I'm going to do it similar to Everard Junction where he gets basically 12, 12 or 16 mil plywood and um, or MDF wood, whatever you have it, uh, convenient and basically cut to a cutout and just place it on top and basically I'm going to I'm going to make it removable. I'm not, not going to make it a fixed object just like the the, the wagon tower. They weigh, they weigh enough for me to have them as a moving object. The, the cars aren't going to rattle around it or anything like that with any difference so that's not a problem um, but other than that this layout updates coming to an end I hope you guys have really enjoyed um, this update it's taken me a while to prepare it as I said I spent a good five or six hours on the layout just cleaning already yep sorry my phone cut out um, yeah I was just saying I spent about five or six hours over the weekend just cleaning out the layout so hopefully you guys um, have enjoyed this update and I want your feedback below so I I really do need reading all your comments and uh, any suggestions or any inquiries about my rolling stock or any any anything you want to see running. Um, feel free to comment it below. Uh, the DCC system is working well, so you should should be able to run any any stock that I have. Um, I'll see if I can put some links below to see what I'm actually looking at purchasing. I've also been looking at the Hornby um, the Hornby pre-made engine shed. I'll have to look into it. Worst worst cases, I might have to purchase just a single single engine shed, and I'll take it from there. But um, we'll, we'll see how we go. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to fit a four a four a four road engine shed in this space. No, um, only because there's only three lines coming out, so there's no way that's going to fit. Not unless I change something around here. But I'll have to look at the dimensions. I don't want to overcrowd this area too much. As you can see, it's a construction sign at, uh, sign, uh, scene at the moment, so we'll wait and see, I guess. Other than that, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, Slayer's running well. 
And uh, I look forward to seeing some of your updates as well. I've been subscribed to most of you guys, if not all of you guys. And uh, I've been looking at your updates as well, which is kind of get me out, out of the bed and trying to get work on this layout for you. So, so let me know on your feedback and I'll try and process this one and post this one, one up online as soon as possible. Um, hopefully I can get another update for you on the weekend after I fix up my, um, this track area over here. I've got plenty of flexi track around, so I should be able to fix up this area in no time at, uh, at all. And I'll try and make it as smooth as possible. Like this, this junction over here, it came out really, really smooth. It took me about 20 minutes to do it, but it came out well, and uh, I'm really happy with it. And the track came out exactly to where I needed to come up to. Basically, any closer to the main line, it's, um, it's basically going to touch. So the, dis the distance is perfect to me. As you can see, the 416 does come pretty close. So the distance, this distance is spot on. All right. So I'll leave it here for the time being. This update's going to take me a couple of hours to process and upload. So. I uh, hope you guys have definitely enjoyed and um, look forward to reading all your comments. Alrighty, bye for now. Happy modeling.